On today's show, Peter Kling and I continue our conversation, the Donald Trump prophecy of 2017. Specifically, we discuss the UN Security Council's unanimous 14 to nothing vote to limit the expansion of Israel and Obama's decision not to veto the resolution. Enjoy the show, and to the audience, please make your comments in the comments section, like the video, and have a happy new year. Peter Kling is considered by many to be the Einstein of biblical prophecy using the methodology of hermeneutics. Peter, just quickly, so the audience understands, what are hermeneutics? Hermeneutics is essentially the, named after the Greek philosopher Herm, so we look at things from a more, a more pure standpoint. It, it kind of, when we look at something, it, it, we look at it and, and don't go with the necessary, um, the, the accepted belief or the accepted version. We look at it deeper and look at it from a, a different viewpoint. In my case, I do it from a scientific viewpoint. So when I look at the scriptures, I'm not quoting doctrine and dogma. Uh, I'm looking at it from a total scientific viewpoint. And once you do that and scrape away the doctrine and dogma, boy, you get a totally different picture of what's or understanding or comprehension of what's going on in the Bible. I never got to learn the doctor, doctrine and dogma, so that's a good thing. I, I learned scripture from uh, the, the viewpoint of history and prophecy and, and how it all ties in together with, with where we are today. And it's, it's an ongoing process. My education started in 1960. So it's, uh, it's been a long process. Anyway, and I became a scientist because there were things that I couldn't understand via the scriptures. And so I thought maybe science had the answer. And I looked in, I was at the 10, the age of nine when I started looking towards science for the answers. And I found them. Uh, about 20 years later, <laughs> when I put science and the Bible together, it all changed. And a good example is uh, Genesis 2, 21 through 23, where God says, it's not good for the man to be alone. I'm going to create a helper for him. So he causes the sleep to come over the man. He opens up the flesh and he removes a rib. He closes the flesh and he proceeds to build a woman from this rib. Well, that's that's a that's genetic engineering. That is a documented case of genetic engineering. Now the whole flavor of the Bible changes. So where are we today? Uh, we're toward the end, very much toward the end. We're down to the, the final countdown of, of prophecies to come about. And one of the, the questions that you had had, had and we talked about pre-show was what's going on with Israel? Uh, the United States just backed out of, of supporting Israel at the U.N.? Odd, isn't it? Now Israel's standing on its own. Now, I'm not here to defend Israel or, or to, to badmouth the United States. It is what it is. How does it fit the biblical prophecy? Quite interesting, and it connects back. It, 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 this just didn't just happen. This is a planned event. Uh, but you got to figure out, okay, why did the United States not support Israel? This is like the first time ever before the UN that the United States didn't support Israel. And what happened to England? England was a great backer of, of Israel. What happened there? Why didn't they support Israel? Well, here's the thing: you have to look at who is the who are the powers behind the powers that we know about. Once you start understanding that and have a comprehension for it, you start to get a better view of it. The, the state of Israel, if you look at the history of the state of Israel, go back to its inception and you look at Israel as nothing more than a bunch of kibbutzes uh, across Palestine. And through war and, and land acquisition, they became the state that we know today when we look at the map. But it's been a slow growth process and it's been at the cost of Palestinian lives. And so... We come to hear that this situation today where Palestine wants to have its own state. Well, how could you deny them from having its own state? And what seems to be an extremely pro-Islamic government here in the United States uh, has turned around and stopped backing Israel. Why? Well, yes, this is part of biblical prophecy because now we enter into a new phase we enter into a phase where Israel is left on its own, and the, there's several different uh, 
passages that have to do with this, uh, but I'm going to look at what uh, Jesus said in in the book of Luke here in the 20th chapter. And he says, when Israel is surrounded by encamped armies, then it's time to flee to the mountains. Now, we we may not say that Israel is is surrounded by encamped armies. They made peace with Jordan. They made peace with, with Egypt. Or did they? You know, there's still a contention there. And Israel today, when you, I've never been there, but it's promoted as being a very homogeneous mixture of people, including Arabs. Uh, it's, but when we look at the history of modern day Israel, it is known, Israel is known as the house that Rothschild built. And we can track this all, the, we can track this back over a hundred years. And, uh, no, actually 200 years, we go back to, uh, the post, or just after the Napoleonic Wars, I believe it was the first Congress of Vienna, where, uh, they tried to, uh, under Rothschild direction, they tried to form a United Nations, so to speak, a one world government, and the problem was is that Tsar of Russia, Tsar Alexander the first, I believe it was first or second, uh, said, "Screw you guys! I'm going home. You don't control me, and you don't control my money." And he left. Now at this time, the Rothschilds had control of the Bank of Germany, control of the Bank of France, and control of the Bank of England. And when Russia bailed out, it was. Uh, Lord Rothschild, who said, my descendants shall see your descendants wiped off the face of the earth. Fast forward basically a 100 years and we get the First World War. And what happens? Uh, The Bolsheviks, which are backed by Rothschild and Oppenheimer money, uh, kill off the Tsar and his family, Tsar Nicholas I and his family. And that's all documented. Well, if we digress back just a bit, And we go to the year 1897. We find that the Zionists, of who the Rothschilds were great backers of, so were the Oppenheimers and other banking cartels, uh, they held their first meeting. It was supposed to be in Munich, Germany. And when the local Jewish population found out what the meeting was all about, they went up in arms. There was such protest that the Zionists moved the uh, meeting to Basel, Switzerland. And within that meeting, it was start moving the Jewish population back to Palestine. The problem was that they didn't own the land. It was owned by the Turkish Ottoman Empire. So what we get next is the First World War. The First World War breaks out, and uh, England has control of Egypt. And as the war progresses, England pushes back the Ottoman Empire and gains control of Palestine. I believe it was in 1917, the same year as the Bolshevik Revolution, uh, you have the, Bo- the, the Balfour Agreement, or first, dec- uh, first was the agreement in the Declaration, and that was to make Palestine a homeland for the Jews. And it was it signed by it was uh, drawn up by Lord Balfour and, and put into law by the King of England, and uh, it essentially designated that whole section of captured territory now to be the future homeland of the Jewish population. Well, how do you get a bunch of Jews that live in Bavaria and Europe to move to the middle of the damn desert? You got to drive them there. And the idea of moving there wasn't too thrilling. Interesting, I've got a friend who was actually born in Palestine, I believe in 1939. Her parents left Warsaw. They, they were Orthodox Jews. They left Warsaw in 1938 to go to, to move to Palestine. They escaped that all that nonsense that went on. And, and I, I never did find out what was the motivating factor, but for some reason they moved back to Palestine. Her, her parents moved back to Palestine. Uh, those who didn't got hung up in the fur, in the second world war and we get the Holocaust. Interestingly enough, I'm not going to debate how many people died in the Holocaust. Let's just say a bunch of people, oh, over 55 million people died during the second world war, but we get the Holocaust. Now it's an interesting name to give a, what was allegedly a tragic event of the death of six uh, million Jews. 
uh, holocaust means whole burnt offering to God. What? Who's God? You see, now you have to start to question this. And what comes out of the Second World War is the United Nations. And one of the first things that the United Nations does is declare Palestine the homeland of Israel. But now they're going against Israel, 14 to nothing, unanimously. Well, hold on. That that was 70 years ago, okay? Yeah. The Rothschilds got a foothold. They, they, or the whole the, the Zionist movement back then got a foothold. Remember, they, they set off on this endeavor in 1897, and it's documented. And so here, uh, basically 50 years, uh, 60 years, no, 50 years later, they established their goal of getting Israel uh, or parts of Palestine, the future homeland of Israel, in which since then, in the past 70 years, they've continued to annex land, either through war or just, as we see now, through annexation. They go in, they plow down a bunch of Palestinian homes, they build a wall, and they put up a bunch of apartment buildings. And so when you look at the map and you go to Google Earth, I mean, go, go to Google uh, Images and just type in, uh, is Israel historic map, and you'll see it. It starts off as little specks, and it covers the whole area now. So, and and that is the that is the situation uh, that has happened within that portion of the Middle East. It's all controlled by Zionist Israel. Now, this is not an anti-Semitic statement because you go and you look at what the Orthodox Jews say. Go and look at what the the Hasidics say, and, and you'll find that. YouTube after YouTube video of groups of Hasidic Jews protesting against Zionist and Israel. And they will tell you that they are not supposed to be in Israel. They are supposed to be a scattered people at this, at this juncture. Well, when you go back and you look at what it says in the scriptures, it says that when you see Israel surrounded by encamped armies, flee to the mountains. And that's what the first century followers of Jesus did is that they left uh, Jerusalem in, in 67 the Roman army uh, came in put an encampment around Jerusalem uh, and cut it off for several months and for some reason picked up it they actually tunneled under the, the temple wall and came up inside the most holy and then they left for some reason they packed up and left town it's believed that cholera may have broken out among the army three years later general titus came back and essentially did the same thing except he raised the city to the ground killed over two million jews and took about ninety three thousand captive back to rome uh we don't have enough time to cover the whole history from there until here but this is an attempt to get the homeland back but who's it an attempt to get the homeland back by Let's look at the star of the flag of Israel. It's the star of Molech. It's not the star of David. Go do the research. It's the star of Molech. Molech was a child sacrificing god. He wanted child sacrifice. He was a Canaanite god. Canaanites are where we get uh, uh, admiralty law from. Thank you very much. Israel should have wiped them all out. And that's why people say, oh, Yahweh is a, is a bloodthirsty god. He wanted all these people destroyed. Yeah. If they, if they would have been destroyed, we wouldn't have admiralty law today, uh, nor would we have the child sacrificing that's going on today. Did you know that the Vatican owns about 70% of the land in Jerusalem, including everything around the Temple Mount? Interesting little factoid there. And they continue to acquire land. When we look at what the situation is between... Uh, the, the Catholic Church and Islam, it's been a hundred years of war. But now, wait a minute. The Pope has also been turning around and saying, well, all, all religions lead to God. We all, we all have to be the same religion, and he's pushing toward a single one-world religion. This is nothing secret. And he says it's almost blasphemous things about the, what the Church is supposed to be teaching. That Jesus failed while he was here? Come on, please. He never caught, he never gets the concept of that, of that blood sacrifice. It was perfect human DNA. And we're, and he do, and they don't get the idea that we're in the middle of a cosmic war. This isn't just some religious situation that's going on on earth. Jesus never started a religion. He spoke of a kingdom, a government. Here we are today, and we've got these, all of a sudden, all of the kingdoms of the world through the UN seem to be against Israel. Hmm. 
seems like it's starting to fulfill biblical prophecy. Israel doesn't have a friend in the world. But now Trump is chiming in saying, hey, you know, we'll come to your rescue. Well, Trump isn't president yet. And let's see what Trump does in order to bolster Israel. The United States sends something like $11 million a day to finance Israel. Here's a little fact. The United States whole political arena is influenced mostly by Zionism and by the Jesuits or by the Catholic Church, the Vatican. As a matter of fact, we can remember just a little over a year ago, the Pope stood in America's holy places, the political holy places, that is. Why was he standing and why was he at the White House? Why was he standing before Congress telling our congressmen what to do? Why was he standing in Philadelphia at Independence Hall? All of America's holy places. And then he goes on to the United Nations to give his, to, to support the post 2015 development agenda, which was based on a 41 page treatise that he issued October 2nd, 2013. All roads still lead to Rome. Only the Zionists and, and, and the Jesuits are obviously having a split, and this is this can be seen throughout the banking system as well. They both control the banking system. They, they were both part of the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar have been credited with inventing our current banking system. So you've got these two factions that are fighting each other now for the control over what? Where's the world center of religion? Christendom? Judaism? And Islam all focuses right on Jerusalem. So the only way to get to, to, to get their one world government and one world religion is to separate Jerusalem or, or Israel from its uh, supporters to, to the best that they can, and then push for that one world gov one world religion to be centered right within Judea itself, right within the city of Jerusalem. Remember. The Catholic Church, the Vatican, owns about 70% of the real estate around the temple. So that's something considerable. So here we go into some, I mean, there's a lot of other connections here. One of the big hits to the Vatican was the loss of the White House. Through the Knights of Malta and the Obama administration, the Vatican has had control of the White House for 36 years. Ronald Reagan, George Sr., Bill Clinton, George Jr. were all Knights of Malta, and Obama had a letter of endorsement, has a letter of endorsement from the Knights of Malta. And if you have any doubts, again, go to Google and Google Pope Francis and Obama at the White House, and look how chummy and friendly they are. So with Trump coming into president, and he wasn't ever supposed to be president, that was the long shot, the, the dark horse there, and he becomes president, Trump broke control of the, of the Vatican having, or he, he broke the Vatican's control over the White House. 36 years of control, gone. And so now all the, the globalists out in California and in New York are all jumping up and down, paid by uh, Soros and other uh, back, backhand deals. They're jumping up and down saying, this is all terrible. We got to dump Trump. He can't become president. Hey, it is what it is. Trump sucking up to Israel. Trump is very much for the, for middle class America, put America back to, to together again, essentially, and, and make us a whole nation. And there's a very significant portion of Christians for Zionist Israel or Christians for Zion. It's a whole movement. And that's kind of like saying uh, Jews for Hitler, but that's besides the point. Uh, so if Trump is supporting middle America, which is mostly white working Christian people, uh, there's support for the Christian Zionist movement within that group and therefore more support for Israel. What he will be able to do, I don't know because this has already been passed by the United Nations, so it's post factos. Uh, we'll have to see what happens as this rolls out. Trump was trained by Jesuits for two years at Fordham University. His son, Eric Trump, sits on the board at Jesuit Georgetown University. So it seems that Trump was sidled up with the Jesuits. 
No, it, that's not nece necessary. There's a lot of Jesuit colleges, and you'd be surprised. As a matter of fact, if you look at o all the, the world leaders that have sent their kids to Jesuit colleges, it's astounding. I mean, there's princes and princesses that have gone to Jesuit colleges. The difference is with Trump, Trump is not a Knight of Malta. Let's go back to the Knights Templar, because we know them the best. Knights Templar were above the law. The only the only law that they had to answer to, to was the Pope himself. That was it. But we've got several different knighthoods, all knighted by Pope, all subjects to the Vatican and to the Pope, just like as in medieval knights. And so you've got all these presidents that I just listed as being Knights of Malta. They're above the law of the land. Why don't they get prosecuted? Why hasn't Bush gotten prosecuted for crime wars? Why isn't Clinton being taken to the ring? Or why, how did Clinton ever get to run for president? Look at the Clinton Foundation and, and then their involvement in tri child trafficking. My goodness. A and where does this all go? Right up to the Vatican. Why don't they get prosecuted? He's a knight of Malta. The knights are above the law. Or are they? You see, once we start to uncover all this and dig it all out, then we'll start to get the, the, the real truth, which is the beginning of, which is the start of Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, where it talks about the man of lawlessness being exposed. And so this is all a process that we're going through now in what we're seeing with this Pizzagate thing. But it, it, if you were to listen to what I heard, listened to yesterday, it was stomach turning. It, there are now eight million children that vanish off the face of the planet, never to be seen of from again. Gone. Where do they go? They go right down to how it is being controlled by, shall we say, ETs and the feeding upon of Loosh. Uh, I'll leave that for your listeners to go look up. But this is right at the highest levels of, of child sacrifice and what they do. And these are the people that are in power of this planet. So we're going to have a major change. I'm not saying that, that they all are, but at the highest levels, this is what they do. And so the Knights get away with murder, literally. There's got to be a, a supply and demand chain here. And uh, the Knights of Malta, the Knights Templar, all the Knights that are involved in this, that, that have to answer to the Pope. Come on, look at the Catholic Church's history within uh, child abuse. And the Catholic Church owns or operates uh, just over 20,000 orphanages in children's homes around the world. So uh, getting to the bigger picture here, are you saying that the Catholic Church has created a false religion in Zionism? No, not at all. They're two different factions. They're two yeah. totally different factions because the Zionists go back to pre-Catholic Church. The Zionists go back to first century uh, Jerusalem. And that's they were looking for a political king to come in and and kick uh, Rome's butt and send him out of out of the country. And so there was a Zionist movement back before Jesus was born because of Roman occupation. Uh, and hence they adopt this star of Molech as their flag. And so you've got these two major factions, the Zionists and the Jesuits, which are control which control the banking system of the world. It's well documented. Uh, the, the Zionists control the, the Federal Reserve, which again uh, came in under Woodrow Wilson. So many things happened under Woodrow Wilson because he was being blackmailed. Uh, we get the first Zionist court, uh, Supreme Court judge under the Wilson administration. Uh, he, the Federal Reserve is, is the, I mean, they just had him, and it was all because of an, in, of an indiscreet affair that he had with one of his colleagues' wives. So. Uh, while he was uh, a professor at Princeton University. So uh, all of this stuff is, is a matter of control, and, and the control has just gotten more deep. Uh, go back to when Israel wanted to pick a war with Iraq. They lobbied the United States Congress to, at record levels to support them in a war with Iraq, and the United States stood down. They said, you started a war with Iraq, this, you're on your own. This is what, 2013, 2014? And Israel was, was so irritated with that situation. When was Benghazi? 2014, wasn't it? Because it was, it was a, uh, just about two weeks after that decision that Benghazi happened on 9-11. So 
that that's a whole the nine eleven story is a whole nother show. Go to Revelation chapter nine and verse eleven, and it is Apollyon rising. That's a whole nother subject, but uh, that's where we are today. Apollyon rising. And that is why we have so much death, murder, child trafficking, and it all goes unreported, and everybody is just supposed to fall in line and be tolerant. This is the time to be intolerant to all this wickedness and start planning our own futures. We see this stuff unraveling right before our very eyes. Now, this is just one little incident. The United States not backing Israel. I mean, the United Nations. No, the United States through the United Nations not backing Israel. Not veto to, vetoing that, that situation there, but it's one puzzle piece in a vast array of pieces in a huge puzzle that we've put together most of the pieces of. We're just missing a few pieces. You know, Benjamin Netanyahu is calling it an act of war. Yes, he a is. Declara- a declaration of war, no less. I- exactly, and so now... Well, let's go back. Encamped armies, declaration of war. Does the shoe fit? This is where the hermeneutics comes in, because we're not taking this and applying it to anything else other than what is happening in our world today. When we look at what the scripture is saying, it fits. Israel feels like it's surrounded by encamped armies. It's a declaration of war as they look at it. Yeah. Who's behind the who's going up against Israel? Who's going up against the house that the that Rothschild built, that the Zion is built? That's what you have to look at, is is all of a sudden the whole world gone Islamic, uh, oh, we're sorry, we owe Islam something? Wait a minute, who created Islam to begin with? As as it goes, you've got Judaism, Catholicism, and Islam. And when you do the real research, Islam seems to come from Catholicism. It actually is a combination of the, the Gnostic teachings, which was the apostasy of the, first, of the second century, uh, from the teachings of Jesus, and those teachings were twisted by the church to create Islam. Or at least that's what all indications are. No, Muhammad didn't talk to somebody out in the desert. Uh, this roots go all the way back to the Vatican once again. And so here, it, it's, it's the old adage, create the adversary to, to create chaos, to gain control. Without having an adversary, you can't have war. Without having war, you can't gain money. And so this same game is played over and over and over again, and it's still being played today. And it, this is all going to be tied in, and we are going to see this exposed. One way or another, we're going to see this exposed because Israel isn't going down yet. However, it will go down soon. But the, the Vatican still has designs on establishing its one world religion and using uh, J- uh, Jerusalem as its focus center point. But the Vatican's got its own problems, big problems, and we're going to see more of this exposed as we go forward in time here. And we are actually going to see the fall of religion as we know it. Uh, Europe is posed for a world war. So is the United States with what Trump wants to do. So, And the, the United Nations basically declared world war against uh, radical extremists, against extremism. In 2014. So we're at World War. World War Three has already started. Peter, we're out of time for today. Can we have you back on in a few days or something like this? Absolutely, because there are so many little facets to this. As I said, this is just one little puzzle piece in a much bigger array. And we're, the road that it's taking us down is amazing. And it ties into a lot of other situations which really start back at uh, remember Comet Ison? <laughs> 2013 is where this starts with the first Jesuit Pope in the comet that the greatest comet that civilization never saw. Anyway, uh, absolutely, we'll be back on. I'm at your disposal. If you want to find out more about me, go to my website, www.peterkling.com. But I surely suggest that you find the book, Letters to Earth The Future is Yours. All the answers are there. So love and blessings to all. Have a great day.